Hey our fans, it's Doug here from Fifth Wall TV. I thought it was about time I dropped a warm, cuddly look back at the street art action over the last couple of months. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the baby cop mural that got everyone talking. The artists that have been floating a drowning house down the River Thames, an artist using deep fake technology to create art, and a whole bunch more. But I thought we'd kick things off with this latest monster from everyone's favourite French pap, JR. The French photographer JR is one of the most consistent creatives utilising the public domain. His formula just works. Over the years he's done projects that I've liked more than others and I'm always going to question the way that he utilises and incorporates poverty within his work. But in the last couple of years I think he's just branched out to become a real leader of the pack. For his latest project in California he's turned the Teja Chapi maximum security prison into a canvas. The artwork itself is a simple black and white photograph that's been printed out into 338 strips of paper and then pasted onto the roof. Depicted within the image are 30 male figures, comprised of inmates, prison staff, family members and victims of crime. Taking this to the next level, JR has created his own app that you can download where you can go on and listen to interviews from the subjects within the mural. So this means you can hear first-hand accounts of gang culture, redemption, rehabilitation, and trauma. So what I wish to say is that, you know, uh, I'm an I'm a ex-gang member. Uh, you know, I grew up in a rough area, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I was influenced by everything that was going around me as a kid. So my name is uh, Lieutenant Elias Garcia. I'm the uh, public information officer here at the California Correctional Institution. As you can imagine, this has been met with mixed views. But if you look at it as an insight into a conversation about rehabilitation that's taking into consideration views from multiple angles, then I'm all for it. I'm not going to lie, when I first saw this, I thought it must be a promo for a sequel to the 2017 film The Boss Baby, but it turns out it's actually not at all. As you can see though, what you are looking at is a small baby holding a gun dressed as a cop, possibly suggesting that all cops are babies. Or, more cryptically, all babies are cops. Think about that for a second. If I'm completely honest with you as a spectator, I didn't really connect with this mural. I thought for such bold, provocative imagery, it didn't really follow through on the serious conversation of police brutality or even gun control. But that's not really for me to say here. The people that were involved in the project were all obviously happy and satisfied that it met the standard that they were going for. So the project happened. But what took this on a completely different tangent was when the artist had been interviewed by the San Francisco Chronicle. During the article, the reporter spends considerable amount of time acknowledging the artist's requests for anonymity and to protect his identity. But in the same breath as describing this desire to stay hidden, the report reveals the artist's personal place of residence to the door number. This is the most reckless piece of coverage of a mural I have ever seen in my entire life, completely ignoring the wishes of the artist. So, look, no matter what you think of the project or the artwork, this cannot be healthy for the dialogue in which we engage with that conversation. Maybe by the time you watch this, the publication will have acknowledged their shortcomings and redacted the personal information, but as it stands, it's still very much there, clear as day. I will put a link in the bottom to where you can find the article yourself, and if you want to get in touch via Twitter, I strongly encourage you to do so. But don't get personal. It's been a big year for protest art around the world. From balls to the wall graffiti to institutional installations and attention grabbing interventions. And I'm all for it. On the 10th of November, global activism Megadon's Extinction Rebellion floated this model of a sinking house down the River Thames in London. Simple, effective and timed perfectly. As it was only a few days later, the Biennale in Venice had to be cancelled due to flooding. In a sad twist of irony, this was at the exact same time that the government in Italy had rejected to implement measures to combat climate change. This level of Monty Python stupidity would be hilarious if we weren't living in it. 
There cannot be any doubt that technology is advancing way beyond what we experience at a consumer level. If you can whack a filter on a selfie from your phone, then you better believe those being funded directly to develop tools for manipulation have a hell of a lot more firepower in their arsenal than we realize. To draw attention to this, the Manchester-based artist and activist Bill Posters has been utilizing deepfake technology to highlight the vulnerability of our privacy. Imagine this for a second. One man with total control of billions of people's stolen data, all their secrets, their lives, their futures. I owe it all to Spectre. Spectre showed me that whoever controls the data controls the future. For those unaware, deepfake technology is where you combine video and audio data from a person, allowing you to manipulate reality. Now, the results can be funny. This was very truly surprising for me or they can be kind of terrifying. During an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. For his most recent action, Bill Posters has taken aim at the candidates for the forthcoming British general election. Hi folks, I am here with a very special message. Since that momentous day in 2016, division has coursed through our country as we argue with fantastic passion, vim and vigour about Brexit. Despite numerous exposés, the people behind Cambridge Analytica continue to distort information fed on social media platforms like Facebook. And as it stands, this seems to cause absolutely zero concern to the founder, Mark Zuckerberg. When was the issue discussed with your board member, Peter Thiel? Uh, Congresswoman, I don't, I don't know that often. You don't know. This was the largest data scandal with respect to your company that had catastrophic impacts on the 2016 election. You don't, you don't know. Well, Congresswoman, I'm sure we we discussed it after it. Uh, after, after we were, were aware of what happened. Okay. I had actually had the artist locked in for a sit down interview and I really wanted to pick his brains on this project, but he bailed on me last minute. So as a person, he's actually dead to me now, but you never know, maybe someday. <laughs> now I understand that may not be the chipper little video that I initially promised. So to see us out, here's some banging bits of color that's been slapped on walls over the last couple of weeks set to a cheery soundtrack. I'm off to Miami after this for Art Week with Juxtapose Magazine. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, links below. Till next time, my name's Doug, this was Fifth Wall TV. Oh.